Hello everybody, this is Basim with Join the Graph. In the first video of this Getting Started series, we saw how to create an instance of the modern toy graph and how to run Gremlin traversals on it. In this second video, we will start with an empty graph database and we will add the vertices and edges ourselves. This Getting Started series is based on the Getting Started tutorial on the Apache Tinkerpop website, the one you see on my screen right now. Okay, I'll start by running the Gremlin console. And I will make everything bigger. I like writing my commands in a text file, then copy and paste into the Gremlin console. We need to start by creating an empty graph database. And remember, in the previous video, we created an instance of the modern toy graph, and we did it by calling tinkerfactory.createmodern. In this video, we want to start with an empty graph database. So instead, we will call tinkergraph.open. We will write graph equals tinkergraph.open. And I will copy that and paste it into the console. And this created an empty graph database for us with zero vertices and zero edges. Next, we need to create the traversal source because remember, the graph is not enough to execute gremlin traversals and commands, we need a traversal source object to provide some context to gremlin, to provide information like the traversal strategies. So we will say g equals graph.traversal. And we just created the g object, the traversal source object. Now we need to create the graph elements, the vertices and the edges. But before we start doing that, let's look at the graph we're about to build. You see it's a very simple graph. It has two vertices and one edge connecting them. We have the person vertex, has the label person, the ID 1, and the properties name Marco age 29. And we have the software vertex, label is software, ID is 3. It has two properties, name LOP and Lang Java. We have the edge created, which connects the person vertex to the software vertex. It has the label created, the ID 9, and it has one property, weight equals 0 0.4. So let's start creating this graph. We will start by creating the person vertex and assigning it to V1. So I'll write v1 equals g dot add v. And add v is the function that you call to add a new vertex to the graph. And it takes one argument, which is the label of this new vertex. In this case, the label is person. And this command would be a bit long, so I would like to write it on multiple lines. And the way to do that, to have a multi-line command, is ending the line with a backslash. And this tells the Groovy console that this is a multi-line command. There is more that's coming on the next line. So do not execute the command yet. Just wait for what's coming on the next line. And after the backslash, I can go to a new line. And I want to set the ID property. So I'll call that property ID and the value of the ID property will be 1. And I want to go on the next line, so I'll write backslash. And call property again, because I would like to set these two properties. I want to set name to Marco and age to 29. So I'll call property, and the first argument is the property name, which is name here. And value is Marco. And we want to set the other property. The property name is age and the value is 29. And we need to make another function call, which is next. This will get us the newly created vertex, so it can be assigned to v1. And I know there is a lot that's going on here, so I'll explain a little bit more. This line right here for setting the ID property to 1 well, normally when you call property, you pass a string as the first argument, which is the property name. Except when you're setting the ID property. 
Because the ID is a special property, so it is set in a special way. This ID right here, it's not a string, it's actually an enumeration value. You can write it in a different way. You can say t.id, and it will be the same thing. So t is an enumeration, and id is one of the values of the enumeration t. But because the values of the enumeration t are statically imported by the Gremlin console, you can just say id without prefixing it with the enumeration name. So that's, that's it for setting the ID property. And also I wanted to explain a little bit more this call to next at the end. Well, each of these Gremlin steps like add v and the property step, each of these steps it returns a Java iterator, which is not what we want to assign to v1. We want to assign the newly created vertex to v1. So this call to next right here, it gets the first value and first and the only value from this iterator. And this value will be the newly created vertex. So it will be returned by this call to next and assigned to v1. Okay, let's test this command in the console. And it did create the vertex with the id1. Perfect. Now the next step. Create the software vertex and assign it to v2. This will be very similar to the previous step. We will say v2 equals g dot add v, and the label here is software. And we will set the ID property. The ID will be three. And another thing I forgot to say about setting the ID property is that you don't normally set the ID property. Right here we can set it because we're using Tinkergraph, which is an in-memory graph database. And it's a little bit more flexible than most other graph databases. So it does let us set the ID property, but most other graph databases they don't let you set the ID property. You can read it, but you cannot set it. It's the graph database responsibility to set the ID property. So let's move on to setting the other properties. So we have the property name will be set to LOP. And we have the property lang will be set to Java. And then we call next to get the first value from the iterator, which will be the new vertex, and it will be assigned to v2. So let's test this in the console. Okay, and this got us the vertex v3. And now the next step is creating an edge from v1 to v2. This time we'll not need to assign it to anything, anything so I'll just say g dot add e, which is the function to add an edge. And it takes the edge label. In this case, the edge label is created. And we need to say the out vertex and the in vertex. So we'll say from v1 dot to v2. And now you can see why we assigned the first vertex to v1 and the second vertex to v2. This was to be able to reference them when we're creating the edge. And after that, we will set the ID property of the edge, because edges have IDs too. Here, the ID of this edge is 9. And it does have another property, weight equals 0 0.4, so dot property, weight, 
0.4 and there is no need to call next here because we don't need the new edge for anything we're not assigning it to anything I will copy that and paste it into the console and apparently I made a mistake here oh add e it has a lowercase a not a capital A And this one did work. Perfect. So the edge was created. Next, we will traverse this graph that we just created. We want to get the name of the software created by Marco. And to do that, we need to first get the Marco vertex, this vertex with ID 1. We can, of course, very easily get it by ID, you know, by saying g.v1. This will get us the vertex with ID 1. But just to try something different, let's pretend we don't know the ID. Let's pretend we only know Marco's name. We know that it has a property name and its value is Marco. So to filter by a property name, what we do, we say g.v. This will select all the vertices in the graph. And then later we will filter by name. We'll say has and the property name is name. So it has a property called name and its value is Marco. This will filter all the vertices in the graph by the vertices having, having a property name which value is equal to Marco. And of course, only this vertex will meet this condition. And just to show you something that's commonly used Usually you pass as the first argument, you pass the vertex layer, because what if we have a software called Marco, for example? We don't want the software to be selected by mistake. So the first argument to has can be person. And this is optional, by the way. It will work perfectly fine if you remove this first argument. But just to be more specific about what we're selecting from the graph, we want to pass the label as the first argument to, to the function has. So this will get us a vertex with the label person that has a property name, which value is equal to Marco. So just to visualize this, let's imagine how it will look like. In the first step, g.v, this selects all vertices in the graph. So we will have a gremlin here. and another gremlin on the other vertex because g.v will return all the vertices in the graph. Then has will do some filtering. It will filter by a vertex having label person and property name that's equal to Marco. And of course, only this gremlin right here is on a node that meets this condition. The other gremlin is on a vertex that does not meet the condition and will be removed. Now only this gremlin right here remains so we need to move this gremlin from this person vertex to the software vertex because we want the software that's created by Marco. So what we will do, we will say dot out and the name of the edge that will be used to move to the other vertex, the name of the edge is created. Sorry, the label of the edge created. And when you say out created, this will move this gremlin from the out vertex to the in vertex. So right now the gremlin is here on the software vertex. But we don't want the software vertex, we want the value of its name property. So what we will do here, we'll call dot values name and this will get us the value of the name property from the vertex that the gremlin is on right now and this should get us what we want so let's test it in the console Oops. yeah i forgot the backslashes still error Oh, sorry, values instead of value. Okay, this should be the last mistake. 
and it got us the software name, LOP. And this is exactly what we wanted to get. Okay, this was the last traversal for today's video. I will upload this text file somewhere and put a link in the video description. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please stay tuned for more Graph Database and Tinkerpop videos. And thank you so much for watching and see you next time.